now there are thousands of lawsuits that have been filed under the Adult Survivors Act in the past year, but once again, that window of opportunity closes this week. I, I warned young Miami. I said, and you better run as fast as Cassie did. Roger Bonds, Sean Diddy Combs, former head of security, recently surfaced in the media spotlight following his involvement in the lawsuit filed by Cassie against Diddy. Bonds, who worked closely with Diddy during the time he dated Cassie, was named as a witness in the lawsuit, which accused Diddy of a decade-long cycle of abuse, including physical violence and sexual misconduct. There's people who are calling me this week who just found out about it for the first time after Sean and Combs was sued. Bonds took to Instagram to address the situation, sharing a series of cryptic messages and photographs with both Diddy and Cassie. He stated, This is not meant to be threats or snitching or anything like that against Cassie or Diddy or anyone else. Emphasizing his intention to speak his truth, Bonds' post continued, This is me telling my truth as I truly remember it for two reasons only. First, because I have four daughters, so on all dudes, my truth as I saw it, saw it, and was involved with it for years. This statement highlighted his personal motivation to come forward, rooted in his role as a father. In a now-deleted post, Bond shared his willingness to break his silence, captioning, I'm willing to tell my truth because for so many years I was quiet. Nothing matters now but family. The emphasis on family in his message underscored the gravity of the situation and his perceived responsibility to speak out. Bond's role in the lawsuit was significant due to a specific incident in 2009 where Cassie alleged Diddy assaulted her after learning she was talking to another music manager at a club in L.A. Cassie claimed that Diddy attacked her in the car after the club outing and Bonds attempted to intervene. His Instagram post, however, left ambiguity about whether he was confirming or denying Cassie's account and did not explicitly state his position on the allegations. And, but we've also heard that there is some secret lawsuit going on in New York City mm -hmm. as it relates to Diddy, too. I don't know. The lawsuit itself, which accused Diddy of controlling and abusing Cassie for over a decade, was dismissed following a settlement. But the details that emerged painted a harrowing picture of their relationship. Cassie accused Diddy of a pattern of abuse that started soon after she met him in 2005, when she was just 19 and he was 36. Her allegations included beatings, forced substance use, and coerced sexual encounters with other men while Diddy filmed them. So she claims she did try to leave several times, but Diddy would always send his team to find her, track her down, bring her back, under the basis that her career would be ruined if she left. Cassie's accusations extended to the realm of sexual battery, sexual assault, and violations of New York City's gender-motivated violence law. One particularly disturbing incident detailed in the lawsuit occurred in a Los Angeles hotel in 2016. Cassie claimed that a drunk Diddy punched her in the face, giving her a black eye. When she tried to leave, he allegedly followed her, hurling glass faces at her. This incident, she claimed, was captured by the hotel's security cameras and Diddy purportedly paid $50,000 for the footage. The control Diddy exerted over Cassie's life was also a focal point of the lawsuit. She accused him of dictating her career moves after signing her to Bad Boy Records and even having access to her personal medical records. An MRRD. Scan Cassie had for memory loss, possibly due to substance use or a beating, was sent directly to Diddy. According to her claims, He has people followed. He has people watched. He does all kinds of and He's a piece of Cassie's legal team, led by Douglas Wigdor, stated that Diddy offered her a substantial sum to prevent the lawsuit from being filed. Mr. Combs offered Ms. USL, Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit. She rejected his efforts, Wigdor claimed. However, Diddy's camp vehemently denied these allegations. His lawyer, Ben Brothman, countered by saying that for six months, Diddy had been subjected to Cassie's demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship. Brothman described these demands as blatant blackmail and labeled the lawsuit as riddled with baseless and outrageous lies. The lawsuit also brought to light other bizarre and troubling aspects of their relationship. It alleged that Diddy forced Cassie to participate in freak-offs, events involving substances, sex with male sex workers, and Diddy filming the encounters. These activities, according to Cassie, took place at various high-end hotels and Diddy's homes. No, I oh feel like more in more relationships than not, it was a mutual decision. Right. And if not, then it was like, I was like, 
that's done. One of the most shocking claims in the lawsuit was the suggestion that Diddy was responsible for blowing up the car of rapper Kid Cudi, who Cassie was rumored to be dating. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. The suit alleges a claim confirmed by Kid Cudi through a spokeswoman. This is all true. Kid Cudi confirmed it? That the car blew up. That, re- that really happened in real life? He'll be blowing up cars? Despite these disturbing allegations, the lawsuit was settled amicably, with both parties agreeing to terms that were not disclosed to the public. In their respective statements following the settlement, Cassie expressed her desire to have some level of control over the resolution, thanking her family, fans, and lawyers for their support. Diddy, on his part, wished Cassie and her family the best, concluding his statement with love. This settlement, though resolving the legal battle, left many questions unanswered of the nature of their relationship and the veracity of the allegations. The case's conclusion, swift and private, contrasted starkly with the detailed and public allegations that preceded it. Roger Bond's statements add a complex layer to the unfolding narrative surrounding the allegations against Diddy. His position as a former head of security provides a potentially unique insight into the personal dynamics between Diddy and Cassie. However, the ambiguity of his statements and the deletion of his Instagram post leave many questions unanswered, contributing to the ongoing tension and uncertainty surrounding the case. There's too many coincidences. Too many. The saga of Sean Diddy's combs and Cassie Ventura's relationship, once a beacon of glamour and success in the entertainment industry, reveals a stark contrast between public perception and private reality. Their journey, beginning in 2005 and lasting until 2018, unfolded amidst the glitz and glamour of the music world, but was marred by underlying turbulence. As later allegations by Cassie would reveal, their story began in 2005, a key turning point in Cassie's life and career when she was just 19. She signed with Diddy's Bad Boy Records, marking the start of not only a professional relationship, but also sowing the seeds of a personal one. Despite being in the public eye, both Diddy and Cassie initially denied any romantic involvement. The early years were shrouded in mystery, their interactions observed but not confirmed, creating an air of intrigue around their dynamic. Do you believe in love at first sight? I do. I do. Was it love at first sight with your boyfriend? It was a long time ago. (laughs) By 2007, Cassie had become the face of Diddy's Sean John fashion label, stepping further into the limelight. Her music career, under Diddy's mentorship, blossomed. This period saw them emerge as a power couple in the entertainment industry, often gracing red carpets and industry functions together. They embodied a seamless blend of business and personal relationships, each bolstering the other. Who do you call him Puff? Yeah, Puff, I, Sean. Yeah? I think everybody nice. has their different... The relationship took a more public turn between 2009 and 2012. After Diddy's on-and-off relationship with Kim Porter ended in 2009, he and Cassie began appearing together more openly, including at high-profile events like Kanye West's Paris Fashion Week show. This public acknowledgement, however, did little to quell rumors of breakups and reconciliations that swirled around them, adding layers of complexity to their already scrutinized relationship. I keep everything right here. Or right here. There you go! That's how you do it, right? The period from 2013 to 2014 saw them navigating the challenges of a high-profile relationship under the intense scrutiny of the public eye. They shared glimpses of their bond on social media, though these were often interspersed with challenges and rumors. A significant moment was when Diddy posted an image of a large diamond ring on Instagram, igniting engagement rumors. Although Diddy's representative denied these claims, the sight of Cassie wearing the ring only fueled further speculation. The final days of their relationship, from 2015 to 2018, were perhaps the most tumultuous. Reports of splits followed by reconciliations made headlines, as did Diddy's philosophies on relationships. He once stated on The Breakfast Club, If I'm in a relationship with you, like 25% of your time, you're gonna just feel like, Aw man, I hate being here. This guy, aw man. He cheated on me. He lied on me. Followed by, but then there's 75% of I'ma make you the happiest woman in the whole wide world and I promise you'll smile the most. This quote perhaps inadvertently shed light on the complexities and challenges within their relationship. One notable incident reported by TMZ involved a heated altercation where Diddy took Cassie's phone, leading to police involvement, although no charges were filed. Despite these challenges, the couple would reconcile, only to eventually part ways. 
their last public appearances in 2018, including posts on social media, indicated the end of an era. Sources close to them confirmed their split, marking the conclusion of a relationship that, for years, had been a central narrative in the world of music and celebrity. Yeah, and also Cassie for holding me down in the dark times. Love. In hindsight, the relationship of Diddy and Cassie was a tapestry of highs and lows, public displays of affection, and private struggles. The unfolding of these events juxtaposed against the later allegations of abuse paints a picture of a relationship that was far more complex and troubled than it appeared to the outside world. This dichotomy between their public persona and private ordeals adds a poignant, if not disturbing, dimension to the story of Diddy and Cassie, a narrative that continues to unfold and evolve. Giving survivors an opportunity for justice. They want history to, to reveal what happened to them. They don't want their abusers to get away with it. Now we turn to you, our astute audience, for your insights and opinions. What do you think about the stark contrast between Diddy and Cassie's public persona and the private turmoil revealed in the lawsuit? And considering the allegations and the eventual settlement, do you believe that the truth of their relationship will ever fully come to light? Your thoughts and perspectives are invaluable in this ongoing conversation. Please share your views in the comments below and let's continue this intriguing discussion. Goodbye for now and remember, in the world of celebrity, there's always more than meets the eye.